everybody. Today's model building workshop, I'm going to try something a little different. I'm going to work with some uh, with a World War I plane. This is the Fokker D7. This was considered one of the best the, uh, of the fighter planes to come out of World War I. And it's a small 172nd scale kit from Ravel. Over here, they've got some Airfix ones. The RE8. Southworth Camel. It's the one that Snoopy flies. Or believes he's flying when he's fighting the Red Baron. And the Red Baron flew the DR1. So, World War I planes tend to be very colorful. We have some examples here of different ways the DR1, the triplane, could look. So, very colorful examples. Look at that one, huh? I should hold it closer to the camera so you can see this. So. So that's some of the fun with World War I, is that the colors are pretty cool, very vibrant. But they can also be challenging to build and challenging to paint. So I like the top of this, it's, it's really nice, but the challenge of that model, of course, you and your kids can do whatever with these models. You don't have to follow the paint schemes, but you can do just about anything. And it probably wouldn't even be wrong in World War I, because, especially with the Germans, because they had, you know, oh, here's an example. The, the Red Baron there had a red plane, and they had this whole thing they called the Flying Circus, where they had all of these planes in very loud, crazy colors. And the idea behind that was kind of uh, to scare the, uh, the enemy, because they believed, we're, we're such good pilots, we're so good that... We're not even going to attempt to camouflage our planes because we're so good. Yeah, come get us was the idea. So, so in some cases, the crazier the paint scheme, the better, right? That's that was their thinking. So as you can see, this is a, a pretty tiny model, and what I'm looking at today. Oh, gee. Before I even get there, here's the decal sheet. So I think the idea here is with these, there was a uh, common German camouflage scheme where they would, it's called the Lagens pattern, where they would have these dots. And I think the point of this kit is to paint that like a coloring book, different colors, which I would lose my mind trying to do that. <laughs> so. Yeah, I don't know about that. Let's look at the instructions here. Okay, so there's a couple of versions here. Yeah, so there's one that's very colorful and it has that crazy idea from underneath. Although you can certainly just paint it, you know, the blue and red and white like that. And the other option is overall white. Well, that could be a simple way of doing that. Just leave it all white. That's a thought, too. So, anyway, I got a number of these model kits from a hobby shop, and they uh, gave the library a really good deal on them. So I got a stack of these planes. And I'm going to try one of these out to see what's involved with this model because, you know, it's a nice size for kids the price was really good because they gave us such a deal but biplanes you know the two winged aircraft like this can be really tricky to build so i'm going to see just how tough this is and if this is even something that a kid could do uh, i know i built oh, i built this as a team but i don't know well not this one but some of these planes i've built before as a team so, I'm going to see what this looks like. All right, so it's got a instruction sheet that's got a lot of blown up pictures, which are not the easiest. It's got three steps and then you paint. But they do tend to cram <laughs> a lot of stuff happening in each step. 
It's not my favorite way of doing an instruction sheet, but I guess they were looking to save paper. <laughs> uh, so let's try to figure this out, because that's a complicated mess of a diagram, but I kind of get the idea. All right, so I'm going to start putting the engine and the propeller and the little propeller cap on the back. I'm going to start with that. That shouldn't be too bad. This might have a blade here. Again, I don't really recommend these with kids. All right, so here's the engine. And I think that, yeah, it's a little cap there. It's supposed to be on there. All right. Some sort of, looks like a radiator type cap. It almost looks like it doesn't belong there, but it does. All right, it doesn't look too bad. Got a little bit of flash, you know, added plastic that came from the molding when they put this in the mold. That's not supposed to be there. It's on this. Oh, uh, hell yeah. This ring where the propeller is supposed to go through. Yeah, it's a little messy, but as you can see, I did some preliminary painting on this. I painted the pilot and the propeller. And a little bit of the inside, a brownish color. So it looks like it's wood inside, just to give it something. Because since it's molded in white, I thought it would scream if I didn't do something on the inside. But well, who knows? If, it, if, if, if I decide to go with the all-white version, I guess it wouldn't have mattered that much in the long run. That does have a bit of a molding seam on there that's a little nasty. But okay. Well, eh, not that bad. Okay, so here's the propeller. That is not flat. So some cleanup needs to be done on the back here of this propeller pin. Because it's on an angle, it's not straight. That could affect how the uh, cap goes on and if we want this thing to spin. Which is kind of nice if it does. It doesn't have to, obviously, but I'll try to make it work. Okay, now I'm going to find the cap. I think that's the cap here, number seven. Yeah, that's the cap on the back. There's not too many parts to this model, which is probably good. Yeah, that's got a little bit of flash on there, it's got to be filed down. Let's see if this is going to fit on here. Oh yeah, that fits very well. So that's a bonus. <laughs> Come on glue, there we go. Very carefully. Okay, push that down. Make sure it's movable, which it is. Yeah, you'll be careful not to get the glue. The glue just needs to be on the, the shaft of the propeller and goes into this cap, because if it lands on the uh, motor piece, then it's going to stick and it, the propeller won't spin. Not the end of the world if it doesn't. It's not really going to fly anyway, right? <laughs> Okay, uh, let's see. Next, I'm going to get these two fuselage halves together. Yeah. Sound effects are not necessary, but sometimes it adds more fun to it. <laughs> right. Samurai model building! Wah! Anyhow. And yes, I was silly to begin with. It has nothing to do with me working in this basement for the last month or so. <laughs> Don't worry about me. I was already like that. I'm wearing my salute to the Canadian Air Force hat today. Because we've reached that point in the pandemic where I'm in desperate need of a bobber. <laughs> so, since I don't have one hiding in my basement with me, Hats suddenly become a nice accessory. 
Because otherwise, you're going to think I'm a wolf man. Yeah. Look at that. Could have dropped that, but I didn't. Got spider like reflexes, like Spider Man. Yeah. Right. All right. I'm trying to clean this up a bit. Actually, Molten's pretty good. Ravel is a pretty good company. And they've been in business for a really long time. My dad built Ravel. I grew up building Ravel. The only thing that's kind of changed is Ravel used to be an American company, and now they're out of Germany. In this global economy where everybody kind of moves around and companies kind of get bought and sold, things tend to move. All right, let's get this pilot. As you can see, I did a little bit of painting on him, not much. I left the, you know, the, the scarf is white because he used to have those crazy flying scarves. Painted his face a little tiny bit of like a tannish peach color, brown leather helmet, and a black uh, uniform. Smart Mr. Flash on these. Getting the impression that this kit, even though this is new, it's a new boxing of it, but it looks like this mold has been sitting around for a long time. I think this kit's been in, in existence for many, many years. They just keep reissuing it with a new box and a new picture. Yeah, his head's a little lumpy, but well, and he's got a lumpy head. He's not a blockhead. <laughs> okay. So, I'm going to try to get the pilot started to sit in this seat. Oh, yeah, right. Come on. Maybe this pilot's afraid of flying or afraid of heights. He doesn't want to go in the plane. <laughs> okay. Now, let's try to get these two halves together. Because I did the test fit a moment ago, and it seemed like this was going to fit pretty good. So, let's hope so. Like I said, I do like this glue and the way it, you can draw with it. Uh, I think that goes on afterwards. Let's find out. Come on. Come on, you want to go together. Yes, you do. There we go. Get this guy sitting correctly. Okay. So far, so good. Don't like the seam on the underneath, but I can file that down a bit. Tend to get a lot of bumps and things. You can clean them up easily with the good old emery board. One of the best modeling tools ever. Okay. Now let's see about this engine. Looks like that oil cap thing is on the top. Oh yeah, that fits easy. So far, this is going well. I just don't know what it's going to be like when I try to get those two wings together. That's when it's going to get tricky. Okay, that's not too bad. Looks good. So far, so good. Everything's very agreeable at the moment. Okay, let me see what they say next. Well, they don't really tell you what order to put this in, uh, which would be helpful if they did. I'm just kind of making this up as I go. So there is a radiator, not a radiator, uh, it's an exhaust pipe thing. Here it is. Then there's the machine guns. Again, they don't tell you anything of what these parts are. Just guessing by looking at them that, hmm, that looks part of the part of the engine and an exhaust pipe. And somehow that goes
Oh, all right. A little confusing with this diagram, and the picture on the box top doesn't really help much, but if you follow the arrows, all right, so it looks like the engine part goes out in front and the machine guns are well behind it, but at first glance, I thought both of them were going up front here. So I think, all right, so let's get this engine unit up front. Okay. Oop. I can hold. Maybe it's more glue than that. A little more convincing. Yeah. Glue all over my fingers. <laughs> There's that. Let's look for the machine gun, which is right here. I painted that uh, in black. There they are. Let's see how that goes. So far, I'm kind of glad I have one of these because some of these parts look like they'd be difficult to take out with the wire cutters. So that could be a challenge when you do this at home with your kids, getting these parts off the tree. Might be the biggest headache that you may have with this. Yeah, a lot of extra plastic on this part that's not supposed to be there. Oh. Yeah, it's supposed to sit in here somehow. Yeah, well, you don't say, huh, folks? <laughs> Onto this thing. I want to file some of the paint off. Of course, this is a problem I, I created for myself. If you didn't put the paint on first, like I did, which maybe I didn't need to do on this, I may have made this a little tougher than I needed to. Leave it to me to do that, right? All right, well, let's add a little glue in there. Not much. Because this is a small part, so I'm gonna pop it back in. Oh yeah, good. I'll pop it right in this time. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, there it is. Okay. It's starting to look like something now. I like these World War One planes. They look like uh, glorified kites. <laughs> All right, I'm going to put this tail assembly together, and I'll probably finish up with step one and call it a day there. And then next time we'll try and see how these wings go together. I think that's where the drama might be. <laughs> if there's going to be any drama with this model, that's going to be where it'll happen. Oh, Special curved fold. It's kind of a small opening in here. Yeah, there's a bunch of extra plastic around the ends here. Granted, you don't need to be quite so fussy. Though there was a bump where that's going to join the fuselage, which would be an unwelcome problem. I'm just trying to clean this up a bit. There's a couple of bumps down here I really don't like. I don't know if I can clean those up or not. Mm, within a reason. I'm going to leave the other one because it's kind of too much work to try to get at that without this taking damage. All right, so that's going to go here somehow. Uh -oh. All right, I noticed there's two tiny little pinholes on the bottom, which is going to be a little support strut that's going to go in there. So that goes on the bottom of the tail plane here. So, 
you want to add up. Stay. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's going to need the, the rudder piece to make that happy. Let's get the rudder. Piece number 10. I'm going to try to snip out. You carefully. Gotcha. <laughs> The sad thing is, I would probably talk like this even if I wasn't filming. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't say that too loudly. All right, that. And oh, come on! You just went in a second ago. Love it when that happens. It got cranky on me. Why don't you want to go in? You know you do. Ha ha! Uh, no, we're there. Make sure that's oop, straight. Okay. So far, so good. But like I said, I think it's all going to be the wing, joining the top and bottom wing with all those struts that's going to be when my hair grows white, but we'll see. And I think I'm going to put the bottom wing on here. Just that, I think it's this one. Yeah, oh, and there's some nasty, I don't know if you can see that. Some nasty extra plastic blobs on that wing. I don't know if you can see those from there. That's going to be a problem. I'll have to clean that off. Yeah, that didn't work. Boing. <laughs> Let me get that. Plastic. It's got to get shaved off this thing. Come on. Well, at least it's it's leaving willingly. That's always a good thing. So it's not really fighting. It's just kind of there. This this tends to happen when they they take the model out of the mold, the plastic mold machine. Oof. All right, this one doesn't want to work. Too low. I don't have to get too precise about this one, I don't think. I'm not going to go too crazy. The reason I'm building this is to have an example so the kids can see what, what a finished one looks like. And also, for me, as the instructor of the program, to know where the problems are going to be, what parts or what issues might be there when the kids start to do it so I would have hopefully figured out a solution to the potential problems like here's one I'm about to find now because this bottom wing doesn't quite fit so it looks like it's going to need a little bit of filing over here to open this up a little bit more so that this lower wing can pop in here properly. That's all snug. A little more in the back here, I think I'll get it. You'll notice the emery board, there's two uh, sides to an emery board. There's the fine side and there's a slightly uh, coarser side. So you have two choices to work with here. This board's been used so much that it's starting to lose some of the sandpaper on it. 
Okay, see? A little bit of filing and it pops in the way it's supposed to. So that wasn't too bad of an issue there. And so, so now I know that that will be need. Uh, the kids will need to work on that when they put this together. That that's a spot that could be a bit of a problem. So now I want to know how to tackle that. And I'll pop that in there. All right. So so far, so good. But again. That's kind of the easy part. It's going to be putting all of these struts and things on in the top wing. That's where the drama is going to start. But we'll see. And we'll leave it at that cliffhanger. Okay? Till next time, we'll tackle that. Okay, folks. Have a good one. Dream of airplanes. <laughs> Bye.